Hey guys, I'm in Thailand at the Queen Circuit Botanic Gardens, and I'm going to be meeting up with Dr. Piakaset to see what they have growing in their tropical greenhouse. So let's go see what they have inside. It's a great sunny day here today. Yeah, you're quite lucky. Yeah, indeed. Well, I can't wait to go see the greenhouse. Right, let's get inside. It's very tall. Yes, 35 meters high, largest one. This is our very nice palms uh, restricted to Peninsula Thailand again. Mm. Yeah, uh, Arenka Hukariana. I love how it has these edges. Yes, it can grow as a nice ornamental house plant. I was, is it more of a compact variety? But this is the yeah, same. This is, this is the same. Yeah. But it can grow compact. much bigger. Yeah. But look at the leaf shape, you know, the racket like edge. That. I want to show you the fantastic ginger from Malay Peninsula. This one, Singjiber Malaysianum. That's so colorful. We, we call it candy ginger. Yeah, it looks like it. And how does it get different colors? Are they different cultivars or? No, 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 no. Uh, they get, uh, they change the color with age, you know, oh. when, when they start, they start with uh, pale yellow, you yeah. can see, yeah. and, and it's getting darker, and after that, they change to pink. This is one of our native orchids, vanilla. Does it get a, like a vanilla pod on it? Yeah, uh, no smell. No smell, <laughs> no <okay>. smell. <laughs> So you can't really use it for food products. Yeah, can, yeah. cannot, but the things that you, you should notice it's uh, the sap is very itchy. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, then I won't want to notice that. But yes, if you I, get it on you, it gets, it gets right, scratchy. I noticed that because I, I tried to collect this one yeah. in the forest and yeah. then I, I put it on my shoulder like that and I got very itchy here. Yeah. <laughs> so here we have uh, some nice uh, little climbing bamboo you can see here. I want, oh. I, I want you to touch the stem. Okay. Uh, maybe this one, the dark green one. Oh yeah, that's like, it's almost like a... Like sand, sand paper. Sand paper, yeah, or sand like, paper. I was gonna say Velcro for a second, but it is just like sandpaper. Right, right. Like a fine grain sandpaper. Right, right. This is uh, one of the rare climbing bamboo also from the peninsula. Yeah, I haven't ever seen climbing bamboo. You see the stem. Yeah. Wow. Like that. Oh, this is a bee, beehive oh, ginger. Oh, the beehive ginger, yeah. yeah. Finished already. Yeah, so it looks a little tuckered. Yes. I love seeing these when they have all their inflorescences up. And we have, uh, this one is endemic to Phuket Island. You know Phuket, yeah. right? In the peninsula, white elephant palms. Coreodoxa elegans. I see these a lot in landscape design. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. It's nice because it has uh, like white back and then black stripes. Stems, yeah. Yes. I often see them like silver gardens, like right, gardens right, that were looking right. to create a little silvery appearance. This is beautiful with the, the light coming through on the uh, Calathea Worst and Whiskey eyes and yes. so beautiful. That thing's is that an Aralia? It belongs to the Aralia, yeah. but, but the genus is Trevisia. Trevisia palmata. Oh, that's a Trevisia palmata? Trevisia palmata. It's huge. Yes, it's huge. We have these as house plants, but you don't appreciate them because I've never seen them this large. It's even larger uh, than here in the forest, in really? the natural habitat. Yes. Oh, so tre Trevisia palmata is a Thai species it's or a Malaysian. Species, okay. Yes. It's wow. a not northern Thai species. That is a cool plant. I have one growing at home. Now I could appreciate it a hell of a lot more. Again, we have bee beehive ginger, but this is a uh, different, yeah. different colors. It's interesting you're showcasing some variegated versions right. here. And this is uh, a very rare palm, Johannes Tesmania out front. It's yeah. a huge frond. Huge frond, this one. It's uh, occur only uh, in the very south, uh, very south yeah. of, of Thailand, yeah. in Peninsula Thailand. Yes, next to the Malaysian border. We have two species here. Actually, only in this genus, only four species in the world, and, and all occur in uh, Peninsula Thailand and Malaysia only. Wow. So this is the one, Johannes Tesmania altifon, and then we have this one, Johannes Tesmania magnifica. This one is easy. You have a white, 
white back. Oh, so it's white yeah, here, it's I white. see, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to be under these trees when it's a <laughs> rainy season. Right. Do you know what this is? It's, uh, is this an epiprenum or is I think this is philodendron. Philodendron. Is this type of philodendron? Yes. This is also endemic palm to the peninsula. The Ricola peltata variety Suma Wonkiai. This one. Big fan shape. So huge. Did you bring these in here when they were large already or did they were they small when you no, first planted? Small, they small. were small when yes, they planted. They were small at that wow. time. And then the rapids, rapids. That's uh, the common house plant, sorry. Then we go up here. Okay, you can see how large this is. Yeah. It's so huge. I mean, again, these would be, I could see these being collected for like roofing or something, right, you know? Right, right. So impressive. Very nice palms from from Peninsula also, uh, Boresodendron. We call it crying, crying elephant palms. Why is that? Uh, because of actually the the margin of the the, the petio, the stuff is uh -huh. quite sharp. It's quite sharp, mm. like a, a laser. Yeah. You know, and there was a, a local story about the small elephant trying to grab this yeah. one, and the trunk got cut. Oh. So. It, it, she they just, yeah, she just palm. sit and cry. Oh, <laughs> yes. Is this a native begonia? No, this is from South America also. South American begonia. Very prolific here. Oh my God, it's just insane how big. This is uh, one of our native palms, uh, Arenka Westerhuti, which is uh, restricted to northern area of of Thailand, uh, China, and Himalaya. It is unbelievably large. It looks so prehistoric. I mean, it's just spanning from one side of this greenhouse to the other. And it's also got that really white bottom. Is that the one with the reddish undersides? Yeah. It's not in flower, though. It's not in flower, unfortunately. Pinanka silvestris occur in this mountain also, one of the small pinanka species. Small compared to a lot of the other plants that we're seeing. <laughs> not, not that small. Yeah. Look at how, <laughs> yeah. Look at how people are trying yeah, to put people, their names yeah. in there. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Nothing is ever sacred. Yeah, that's not a good behavior. No, no. <laughs> okay, this is a, a very interesting plant we call uh, giant water bug trees. I want you to uh, try to smell the leaves. Try to squeeze it and smell it. Woo! That is like a, it's like a slightly lemony. Yeah, actually, it's it, it's it, it's like our our giant water bug. It smells like a giant yeah. water bug. Yes, and, I and would not know what a giant use water bug giant smells. Water bug, uh, to to make a chili paste, really? you know, to give a special flavor. Wow. Yes. And instead of that bug, you can use this one. No. Because the bug sometimes is so expensive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'd imagine so. And this tree grows like a weed. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, that smells so good. It's like a very clean, not quite lemony. There's like something else other, like almost like a, mm, what is it? Like a clean, lemony, cilantro type yeah, of smell. Many of Thai people, they don't like this yeah. smell also. But yeah, but many of them also love this smell. Well, that's a funny thing because in, in the U.S., cilantro, a lot some people have a gene where it tastes soapy to them. Yeah, right, right. So that, that might just be very similar in the smell. Right. Fascinating. I mean, who was the first person to figure out that the bug tasted like this, you know? <laughs> I don't know, maybe someone tried, yeah. tried before. Yeah, this belongs to the same family with hibiscus. Mm. It's a pterospermum diversifolium. It's produced its own hair, so indumentum here. I think it's just for preventing insects or disease, you know. Interesting. Also on the bottom too. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh. mo mo yeah, most, most, mostly in the upper part. Yeah. yeah. The bottom you have a lot of hair. Yeah. There's some insect. Yeah, that's an insect right there. 
It looks like a yellow mealy bug. Yes. And is that your vanilla again? Yeah, the vanilla. Is that a celibus pepper? Or what kind of pepper or piper is that? Piper ornatum. Ornatum. Yes. Yeah, this is also uh, fun, funny hibiscus also. Hibiscus mac macrophilus. Oh, and look at all the hairs yeah. on this one. Yes. Lots of hair. Yeah. So here you can see the the whole house from from here. It's really nice that you give all these different vantage points to actually take it all in. Especially because like when we were over there, you could really appreciate the size of those fronds, those palm fronds, and then you come back here and you could see it in total sum. And the artificial waterfall here mm -hmm. helps to get more moisture mm -hmm. yeah, in the air. And at the same time, it helps for the ventilation. You can see the leaf movement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's good that you have airflow because it's like, how else do you get airflow in this you know, closed area? Right. You could do that with the waterfall. Right. You could do it with fans, but this is like, feels a little bit more natural. Right. So you have some South American species as well as some from Thailand and Malaysia. Right, to color the, the, the house. But uh, next step in the future, I, I will put more of uh, the native species. Yeah. Yes. And get rid of some South American. Yeah. But it's nice. I mean, they are understory plants. So I guess what you'll need is because these trees are so large, you'll need to find some understory Thai right, species right, for this. Right, right. I love the, the scale this so like i mean even even in the the forest area you have this sense of like grandeur because of the larger trees right. i know it wasn't always this way because you started off with smaller plants but it definitely is ending up that way so here you can feel the air movement by the waterfall you see yeah, this helps the air, ventilation yeah. in in the house it feels so nice and so cooling. We have one rare uh, aeroid here. Yeah, is uh, the, a native aeroid? The, the genus is Stortnera. Stortnera? Stortnera, only, only two or three species in the world. Wow. It's love to grow next to the waterfall like this. Though. Yeah, does it change its leaf morphology or does it stay like this? Stay like this, okay. stay like this. And it has a bright red flower. Oh, really? Yes. So the space is yes, like, the space. yeah, it's really red. Really nice. Wow, cool. And are all the th three species, are they more native to this area? I think maybe only two species. Okay. Yes, yes, occur in this area, yeah. in Northern Park. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this tour. I just really love the the scope and the scale of this, even in the main garden, because you have all that, those forests, those primary forests, it just gives the sense of wildness here. Right, so right. Th thank you so much for showing us around. You're always welcome. So that concludes the tour here at the Tropical Conservatory Greenhouse at the Queen Serica Botanic Gardens in Thailand. I mean, there were some massive palms there. I've never seen anything like that, but of course, I don't grow any of those in my home. So tell me what you liked most about this tour in the comments below. And if you like these episodes, then don't forget to plant your finger on that subscribe button so you can tune in every week. And of course, if you want to follow along on my daily journey, you can do so on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com and on Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. See you guys next week. Interested in developing a deeper relationship with the people and plants around you? Then check out my book, How to Make a Plant Love You. Cultivate green space in your home and heart. And if you're looking for more tactical plant care, then you could turn to the Houseplant Masterclass, which is the first online audiovisual course on houseplant cultivation, care, maintenance, and more at houseplantmasterclass.com.